All right, let's keep going. Let's do function test adds funder to array of funders. Make this public. So up here, we're seeing that this get works. Let's also make sure that the this get funder that we just created works. So we'll say vm.prank user fund me dot fund. I'm going to hit tab a couple times because I'm going to do this exact line up here. Thanks, GitHub Copilot. And then we're going to say address funder equals fund me dot get funder at index zero. So this should be user because we're we only have one funder in here. An important note is every single time we run one of these tests, it'll run setup, and then the test and then start over and then run setup, and then run the test and start over. So even though we called fund me dot fund up here, we're actually going to reset every single time. Now that's why if we made this a different user, we would still go to the zeroth index. So now we just do assert equal, or say funder is user, right? So assert equal, we're saying this equals this, that's what this test is checking. So we'll run this, we'll do a little clear, forge test dash m paste that in here. Uh, okay, that worked as well. Great, let's keep going. Okay, so we've tested that this data structure is getting updated correctly. This is also getting updated. That's great. We could probably add some more tests to check to see if multiple work, but let's say this is good for now. We probably also want to check this withdraw piece. So, task uh, function test only owner can withdraw, right? We want to be able to, we want to make sure that only the owner can call this withdraw function. So we want to make sure this only owner modifier is working correctly. So, well, what can we do? First, let's fund it. So we can copy this line here, paste it in here, and then we'll do vm.expect revert vm.prank user because the user is not the owner. And we'll do fund me dot withdraw. So we're going to fund it with some money with this. And then we're going to have the user try to withdraw because the user is not the owner. Now you'll notice that we're doing via that dot expect revert. And I said, Hey, the next line is should revert. It ignores these VM stuff. So this is saying like the next transaction, that's not like a VM cheat code. So it skips over this one and says, this is the one I'm expecting to revert. Same thing with this. If these were in this order, it would say, I'm going to pretend to be the user for not this one, because this is a, a VM, but for this one. So now if I hit clear, we'll copy this, forge test dash M, paste it in. Boom, we see that this is indeed successful. Awesome. Now, as we get more and more advanced with more and more functionality, these tests are gonna get bigger and bigger, right? Let's say we want to do test only owner can withdraw after 18 withdraws have happened, right? We'd have to do maybe a whole bunch of whole bunch of these, whole bunch of these or something like that. We want to make our tests very minimal. Like we want them to have minimal lines of code. So a really good methodology by a very well known Solidity dev in the space, Paul, he has a great proposed Solidity best practice, organize your unit tests by using a state tree, start by defining the parent nodes at the specific state conditions that drive the behavior of the smart contract. So if this is your contract, write some tests that test something. And once it's good, create a modifier for it. So you don't have to copy paste the code from those tests. If that's confusing, don't worry, I'm going to make it make sense in just a second. We're going to add this modifier called funded like this. And I know we've worked with modifiers before. And in here, we're going to say vm.prank user fund me fund value send value. I'm going to go ahead and hit tab there and this little underscore here. Now, instead of every single time we want to fund one of our tests, instead of writing a ton of code, we can just do public funded in the test declaration. And now we can say, okay, any test we write after this modifier, we can add this funded and we can save ourselves a lot of code. Once some setup gets really big, right? Let's say we had to do some setup to write this test that took a ton of lines of code and we needed to write a ton of tests for it. It's going to make it so that we don't have to keep repeating ourselves over and over again. So big fan of this little best practice. Thanks Paul for setting this up. And now we can just do this instead. So let's go ahead and try to run this again. Now that we're using this modifier and great, it does indeed pass. Okay, cool. So now let's say, let's actually test withdrawing and we'll test withdrawing that actually works. So we'll say function test withdraw with a single 
funder. I'll make this public funded. And now it's automatically going to get set up to be funded already. So there's a single funder, and we're going to go ahead and test withdrawing with the actual owner. And this is where I'm going to introduce the arrange act cert methodology for working with tests. Whenever I work with a test, I always think of it mentally in this pattern. First, I'm going to arrange the test. I'm going to set up the test. Then I'm going to do the action I actually want to test. And then I'm going to assert the test. So in a lot of my tests, you'll actually see me write these explicitly out. So mentally, I can compartmentalize the different parts of the test. So for a range, in order for us to test that the withdraw function actually is going to work, we first want to check to see, okay, what's our balance before we call withdraw so that we can compare it to what our balance is after. So to arrange, we can do a UN256 starting owner balance, because it's the owner who's going to do the withdraw. And this will be equal to fund me dot. And then do we have a get owner function? I don't think we do. We do not have a get owner function. So let's actually make this I owner private and create a getter for get owner. So let's scroll to the bottom. We'll do function get owner. This will be external view returns address return I owner. And in my test, I'm going to say fund me dot get owner dot balance. So we're going to get the owners starting balance. We're going to do a uint 256 starting fund me balance. So the actual balance of the fund me contract, which since it's funded, it's just going to be this send value. It's going to be equal to the address of the fund me contract dot balance. And now in the act, we're going to do vm dot prank fund me dot get owner, because only the owner can call withdraw. So we just want to prank, make sure we're actually the owner. And we're going to call fund me dot withdraw like this. And this is what we're testing, right? We're testing the withdraw. So we put this in the act section. And now we can move over to the assert section. So we'll say UN256 ending owner, or excuse me. Yeah, ending owner balance equals fund me dot get owner dot balance like that. UN256 ending fund me balance equals address fund me dot balance. And we could say assert equal ending fund me balance should be zero. Now I know I said I hate magic numbers, but zero often I don't create a constant for because it's just zero. So we should have withdrawn all the money out of the fund me. And then we can also do assert equal the starting fund me balance plus the starting owner balance should equal the ending owner balance because we withdrew all the money out of fund me. So we should just be able to add it to their address and that should equal the ending balance. So let's go ahead and let's test this. Forge test dash M paste that in here. Oops, oops, I'm doing I owner somewhere. Oh, yep. So this actually fails now. So this should actually be get owner instead. Let's clear run this again. And awesome. So that does indeed pass. Great work. Now let's just do one more test a test with multiple funders. So this is going to be the big function here. So we'll do function test withdraw from multiple funders public funded. And so it's going to be funded once, but let's add a ton more funders. So let's do a uint 256 number of funders. We'll say there's we'll do 10 in a uint 256 starting funder index equals two. And you'll see why I'm doing this in just a minute. Let's go through a loop and let's just keep creating new addresses for this number of funders. So we'll do a for loop, which I know we know how to do. We'll do four uint 256. I equals starting funder index. I is going to be less than the total number of funders. I plus plus. So we're going to go every time we go through a loop, we're going to add one to I here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a VM dot prank and a VM dot deal and create addresses. And they're going to fund the fund me VM dot prank a new address. We're going to deal that new address some money, and then we're going to fund it. So we could do vm.prank and vm.deal. But the forge standard library, which again, is slightly different from the cheat codes, actually comes with this 
standard cheat called hoax, which sets up a prank from an address with some ether. So it does both prank and deal combined. And since it's a forge standard, we can just do hoax, some address, which we'll talk about in a second, and then we'll give it send value. But how do we actually populate the address? Well, I showed you before, we can do address zero to generate an address. But guess what? We can also do address one, address two, address three, address four, address five, address six, et cetera. Except they must be a uint, instead of 256, a uint 160. As of Solidity v0.8, you can no longer cast explicitly from address to uint 256. You have to do a uint 160. And the reason for this is a uint 160 has the same amount of bytes essentially as an address. So that's a little bit confusing. Don't worry too much about it for now. Just know that if you want to work with addresses, if you want to use numbers to generate addresses, those numbers have to be a uint 60. So actually, we're just going to use uint 60 for everybody. And actually, we're going to start with starting index v1, excuse me. But what we can do is we can say address of i, and we'll make this a uint 60 as well. We're going to create a blank address of i, which starts at 1, and we're going to add send value. And the reason we're starting, our starting index is actually going to be 1 here, is because sometimes the zero address reverts and doesn't let you do stuff with it. When you're writing your tests, you just want to make sure you're not sending stuff to the zero address because there's often sanity checks to make sure you don't do that. So, but in any case, we're going to hoax that address and do and add some ether to it. And since we're hoaxing it, it means we're pranking it. So now we can call fundme.fund with this new address. And we do the value. It's going to be send value like this. And cool. So we'll have this many funders actually loop through the list and fund our fundme contract. Awesome. So now we're going to do some of the same stuff that we did above, right? So this is all in our arrange setup. So we're going to say UN256 and my GitHub Copilot actually already knows starting owner balance, UN256 starting fundme balance. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. I hit tab again. And if you want to just copy from up here, you can just copy from there as well. And then we're going to say vm.start prank, excuse me, vm.prank fund me dot get owner like this. And then we'll call fund me dot with draw like this. Now another thing that you'll see instead of just prank is you'll see start prank. And you'll see vm dot stop prank. This is the same as start and stop broadcast. It's saying that anything in between start prank and stop prank is going to be sent pretended to be by this address here. So You'll see this syntax a lot as well. And it's the syntax that I actually prefer to use. And you'll see that I use it a lot. But after we call this withdraw function, which again, this is going to be in the act, we can now move on to our assert phase. And we could say, let's assert that the address of fundme.balance is going to be equal to zero. So we should have removed all the funds out of the fundme. We can assert the starting fundme balance plus the starting owner balance equals fundme.getowner.balance like this. Okay, great. So let's run this test there. Forge test dash M, paste that in. Ta-da, that has also been successful. Now, if we run forge coverage, let's see what happens. How good are our tests now? Aha! They're a lot better, at least for the fund me. We haven't done a whole lot of testing a price converter, but that's fine. Fantastic. We can see we've covered at least 93% of the code in our contracts. So this at least makes us feel a lot better that we've done a much better job of writing some tests, right? Like I said, writing tests can be a little bit of an art, but if everything here is red, that's a bad sign. So we have green on this line, so that's a good sign. Now you might be asking, oh, hey, Patrick, we just wrote this test, but shouldn't the balances actually be lower because we spent gas? And that is a wonderful observation, and we will come back to that. So hold on to that. We'll come back to that in a minute, but let's keep writing the rest of these tests.